morning news song, and I hope you're all having a wonderful morning. My name is Daniel, and I will be sharing a short message with you today. If you could please open your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 39 to 43. Please follow along as I read. Verse 39. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Father, thank you for this morning where we can read more of your word and take in the message you have prepared for us. I pray that the next 10 minutes would be a time to reflect on how you continue to instill wisdom and discernment in us through your teachings. Let this be a time to open our hearts and be ready to learn. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. When I was in elementary school, I often found myself playing alongside my two cousins. At that time, I had no siblings. So these two were the closest people to siblings that I had. I remember that while we played often and had incredible amounts of fun, there were also times where we would fight, argue, bicker, and so much more. There was a time specifically where the three of us were being brashed by running around in the park. Because I was the biggest of us three, I was much stronger and heavier than my cousins. And in one moment, while running around, I crashed into my youngest cousin, purposefully. And he was hurt. He had sprained his ankle and started crying and weeping because of the pain. When our parents came to see what had happened, I had shared the story but did it in a way where I didn't take ownership of my actions. My mom looked at me and said nothing. And I thought, why aren't you saying anything? Do you not believe in me? Are you disappointed in me? What's going on? Eventually, I couldn't stand it anymore. I cried and I weeped and I admitted that it was my fault and that I was sorry. Only then would my mom recognize me and discipline me, but also comforted me saying it was okay. The next day, I apologized to my cousins for what had happened and was sincerely sorry. There's an interesting point to my story. My mother, the one who raised me and nurtured me um, like any mother would, wouldn't recognize me and would only do so after I understood the weight of my actions. It taught me to be responsible and fully know the weight of my actions and the consequences that followed. It also taught me that there was grace in admitting faults and wrongdoing. That's where I relate to this passage. On the day of Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus had already been through so much. He was beaten, scorned, whipped, and chastised as the crowds rebuked him for claiming that he was the Son of God. This was the opposite of what Jesus had when he was warmly welcomed into the city by the people. After carrying the cross to the place of the crucifixion, Jesus was nailed to the cross with two other criminals. Tired and weak, Jesus hung on the cross, not being able to breathe. One of the criminals spouted and screamed at him, demanding that as the Son of God, to free him and of himself. He tested the Lord and even asked for his liberty and freedom as well as Jesus's. The other criminal immediately rebuked him, telling him that they were there because of the weight of their criminal actions. He goes on to ask Jesus to remember him when he returns to his kingdom. Jesus only replies to the criminal who knew the weight of his sins. He tells him that you will be remembered and even more so will be with him in paradise. There are a few takeaways I want to share with this passage. First, look at the first criminal. He seeks and challenges Jesus to go and free both of them using his divine power and his angels. He isn't aware of his wrongdoing that he's committed, nor does he have the slightest inclination to accept his actions. Second, look at the other criminal. He too is a criminal, yet he understands the weight of his actions. He even re rebukes the first for not fully understanding the accepting of his sins. 
If you look in the passage, which is in verses 40 to 41 and 42, it says, And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man, referencing Jesus, has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to the second criminal, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is important. And the last takeaway is how the second criminal reaches out to Jesus to remember him, knowing the weight of his sins. He reaches to Jesus, one who is blameless and sinless above all else. The main point of what I wanted to share with all of you today is to understand the weight of your sins and seek Jesus. To take time to reflect on what you have accounted for sins in your life, truly know the weight of them and seek repentance after you do. Only then can Jesus come save you and in doing so, receive his grace. Many of us, myself included, can recognize that there are times where we ignore sin and acknowledge the wrong that we've done. Whether big or small, sin is sin, and it can be hard to accept it. We find ourselves, like the first criminal, to minimize our sins to where we can justify ourselves in front of God through several ways downplaying our sins, comparing ourselves to others, and balancing our sins with righteous actions. These are but a few examples. But God calls us as Christians to be better, to know that we were tainted with sin and that we can't be cleansed unless we receive salvation from God. And that comes with confession. Knowing that we are sinners and that our actions are rooted in sin is the first step to seeking more of God. To act more like the second criminal one that rebukes others for downplaying our sin and fully accepting his sins as his own is the biggest takeaway from this passage. And most importantly, to seek the one who is blameless and sinless because only Jesus can truly accept us and give us grace for our sins. We're called to understand this way because as Christians, we grow ever closer to God when we understand the vastness of his greatness by knowing that He above all else is sinless and that we are sinful. But in doing so, by seeking Him, can Jesus that is sinless can cleanse us and give us grace. Jesus calls us to understand that the weight of our sins and in doing so to seek Him. That's what I've learned as I share this passage with you. And I hope you all receive the same message. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to be able to dig deeper into your word and into this passage, to be able to receive the message that you have prepared for each and every one of us today, Lord. I pray that you would continue to give us the wisdom and discernment and continue to encourage us to reflect on ourselves, to see what sins that we have continued to progress through our daily lives, Lord, and in doing so, confessing and repenting in those sins, Lord. Only then can we truly look to you as the one way, the truth, and the life, um, and the light to be able to go and truly receive salvation and be cleansed in a way that we are able to see God again. I pray that there will come a day where we will be truly cleansed and in doing so have the opportunity to stand with Christ and to be able to have an eternal life with Him. Thank you so much for this time and thank you for this message, Lord. We love you and we thank you and in your beautiful name we pray. Amen.